Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining on our webinar. We've tried to compile leaders from across the Chino Valley to try and give us updates on what's happening with the coronavirus. Uh, I also wanted to give our members an opportunity to ask questions. So this is going to be your chance, for those of you that are watching at home, to ask questions of leaders in our community. We've brought together some different folks. I've included our agenda on the right-hand side of that chat box panel. So here's who we have that's going to be uh, speaking today. We have Actually, we have from U.S. Congressman's Office, uh, Gil Cesaros. We have Stephanie Wade from uh, the Chino. We have our Chino Police Chief, Wes Simmons. We have the Inland Empire Utilities Agency Director, Steve Eli. We have Inland Empire Economic Partnerships Chief Economist, Dr. Manfred Keel. We have the Public Affairs Manager for SoCal Gas, Leah Peterson. We have uh, a partnership specialist at Los Angeles Regional Census Center, Renee Meta, And we have our US Congresswoman, Norma Torres, or one of her representatives. So those are who's gonna be chiming in today. Feel free to use that chat box to ask questions. I'll do my best to ask questions, or to uh, ask those questions as we're going through it. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna leave it up to Stephanie. Stephanie, why don't you give us a brief update from Congressman Cesaros' office? Yeah, I'll make it as brief as possible. So um, uh, I will tell, tell folks they're probably very interested to know um, what our uh, office is doing vis-a-vis, -vis, um, you know, and, and what the prospects are for the stimulus package that's trying to work its way between both houses. I, I spoke to my legislative director, and I'm jumping off this call in a few minutes to get on a second call with her. Um, you know, the... Uh, what they're seeing in the office is they're very close and they think they're going to pass something today. Um, uh, and then I should also tell you that um, we're working on something that may be very of interest to Zeb and the members of the chamber. And that's, um, we're working with um, uh, the Brea chamber has come to us and they've pointed out that in the stimulus bills that have passed so far, um, none of them have made any relief available for, uh, for chambers because they've only affected 503, uh, 501C3s. Uh, and we know that chambers are C4s or C6s, I believe. Yeah. So we're working on that, but um, unfortunately, I don't think that we can, um, we're gonna be able to, to move on any of that legislation because we found out about it so late. And you know what's gonna go through is gonna go through, but we're gonna come back and revisit that um, shortly as a as a as a fix down the road and then the only other thing i'm about to post in the chat box but um i think we're all very concerned about the availability of masks and other uh personal protective equipment and i do just want to um point out for people who are interested there's a company in uh brea ast sportswear they're a t-shirt manufacturer but in in light of this um the president of that company the chief operating officer has converted their entire facility and has retooled to make masks that we're careful to point out are not medical grade. These are not, you know, um, uh, you know, sufficient for healthcare workers, but they do provide some measure of protection and actually hospitals are ordering them. And I point this out because if people are interested in looking for a way to contribute to that side of the problem, um, they just need help financing their operation and there's a way for you to give on their website. I mean, I don't endorse it, but I know people ask us. So I'll put that in the chat. I'll put their, um, they have a website that you can see. And if you, you care to be involved with them, you can. I don't have anything else, but I'll look in the chat room if anybody has any questions and I'll also post uh, my email and my cell phone number so people can reach out to me directly if they need. But Zeb, unless anybody has anything right now, I'm gonna jump off. Okay, sounds great. Uh, no way to comment on anything while we're having that brief update. So uh, I will shoot you an email if we get some responses as we go through this. Thank you, Zeb. Hey, thank you, thank you. All right, next up we have our Chino Police Chief, Wes Simmons. Chief, are you ready? Thank you, Zeb. Looks like you froze there, but can you hear me okay? I can. Yes, I okay. can hear. All right, perfect. Just, just wanted to share again that our, our police department is out there, uh, out in the community and continuing to respond to calls. We haven't had any um, issues at any of our grocery stores, no, no uh, calls for service. 
well. Um, as far as the city goes, our parks are still open. Um, we've, we've left the restrooms open. We just ask that people um, stay away from the playground equip equipment and things like that. And, it, and as they go to the parks to make sure that they're maintaining their, their social distances, we're encouraging people to, to self-isolate, stay at home, but we recognize you got to get out and you've, you've got to get some exercise, especially if you've got kids. So going to the parks is okay at, at this point. Just make sure that everybody is, is self-isolating. The other thing I would like to share with people is do not call 911 or our dispatch center um, regarding, regarding questions about the order and how, how to enforce that. Those questions are better, better handled by the County Department of Public Health. Our dispatch center needs to remain available for actual emergencies. So I would ask that people would just reserve their calls to the dispatch center for emergencies. If they're experiencing symptoms that they believe are COVID-19 related, they need to call their, their medical provider and their medical provider has procedures to help them, help them through that. Perfect, so, so how, um, thank you for the update. Uh, how much, how much, how much calls are you getting in, in regards to calls that shouldn't be coming into your office? Are you getting a lot of those or is it just a handful? No, we're, we're getting quite, quite a few. Um, questions like, can I go to work? Um, am I allowed to walk my dog? Th those kind of things with, and the answers to all those questions are on our, on our social media feeds, both the city and, and uh, the, the department. And of course, um, the state, the state is putting that out through their, through their uh, information channels, as well as CDC and the county health. You know, I just encourage people to, to go through those methods to find those answers. Okay, great. And then, um, let me see, I had that. Oh, I think that would be it then. Does anybody have, if anybody has any comments or any questions for Chino Police Chief Wes Simmons, please be sure to include that in the chat box on the right hand side. Uh, just to give you an all an update is the whole purpose of this is to make sure that we get an opportunity to ask questions of leaders across the Chino Valley about things that are affecting businesses. So this is your opportunity to do that. So make sure you do that in the chat box. I also want to take the time to thank all of you guys for participating in this because I'm getting a lot of, we get a lot of questions and those same questions about should I go to work, that type of stuff. We're getting those as well. So this would be a great way that we can kind of source that and make sure that we're getting answers to those people because it is unclear to a lot of our businesses about who can stay in business, who can't stay in business, how that's being enforced. And so I really appreciate you coming on and chatting about that. So, so thank you, Chief. I know, I know you're pretty busy as well. So thank you for taking the time to do this. No, no problem. And, and again, if there's any questions, Deb, you can forward them to me and uh, you're going to be doing this weekly. So I can, I can uh, be prepared to answer those uh, in, in the future. Um, for the business, the business owners out there know if you have closed your business, we are actively patrolling to keep your businesses safe. And if, and if uh, people are out there to to do uh, to do crimes, we're gonna we're gonna catch them. And we're gonna take them to jail. So that has not stopped. Cool. Hey, we did have a couple of questions that have come in since uh, since that. Um, one of those questions is: Is there going to be enforcement on businesses that shouldn't be open uh, but that are staying open? Is there any kind of enforcement plan? In action for that. Yeah, the, yeah the, the, governor, the governor's plan is, as he stated when he rolled this out, is to enforce that through social, uh, social pressure, not through, not through law enforcement. Now, as, as things progress, things could change, but the, the enforcement of that comes through the county health officer. Now, yeah. the county health officer can rely on, on law enforcement to assist them, but we are not actively going out there to proactively enforce that. I would encourage businesses to abide by the order. Um, it's, good, it's good for you, it's good for your employees, um, but there are numerous exemptions. Obviously, grocery stores, takeout restaurants, um, construction, different, different things like that that are, that are exempt because we still need those things to occur. Gas stations, all the banks, all those necessary functions that still have to go on. So if, if you're not if you're not sure, I would I would seek uh, advice from the county department of public health whether you should close your business or not. But at the minimum, you should make sure you're maintaining social distances and uh, reduce the number of employees you have in your in your workplace, like we have done here at at the city of Chino as well, allowing people to telecommute 
and, and things like that to reduce the number of people in the workplace. Oh, that's, that's excellent. Um, and then also we have another question is, have you seen any kind of increases in criminal activities since this has taken place? Has it been kind of the same? What's the feedback there? So when we ran the stats last week, our calls for service were actually down 37%. So people are abiding uh, by, by the order to, to self quarantine themselves, stay inside. So calls, calls are down, um, but uh, we don't know how things are gonna go uh, as we move into the future. That's why we're fully staffed as a police department and still out there patrolling to make sure that the community stays safe. Okay, and we have one more question from the Inland Empire Economic Partnerships Chief Economist, uh, Dr. Manfred Keel. Uh, Dr. Keel, I have you set up. I'm gonna unmute you now, I think. You might have to unmute yourself. There you go. Tim and Sam, this is Manfred Keil. Um, I read a, um, to lighten the mood a little, uh, I read a report from the Portland um, Police Department that they got calls on 9-11, um, I'm, I'm sorry, 9-1-1 uh, regarding um, toilet paper. Uh, I hope you haven't received those uh, yet. So, so we, have, we have not received a call reference toilet paper. Um, so, but yes, there are, there certainly are some interesting phone calls that are coming in and our, and our dispatchers are, are doing a good job to direct uh, people to the resources they need. Uh, just the only, the only concern regarding that is while they're taking that phone call, they might not be able to take the actual emergency that comes in. So that's why we're trying to, to limit those calls. Perfect. And then uh, one last question, I think, is what about ride shares like Lyft and Uber? Uh, is there any restrictions on them that you know of? So not that I'm aware of. Transportation has not been, has not been uh, affected. It's an, it's an essential function, you know. But again, I would just, I would tell people to abide, by, try and abide by um, the standards that are out there as far as um, protecting yourself, trying to maintain a distance. I certainly wouldn't ride in the front seat. Uh, of the car right now um, and, and take other measures. If, but if, you, if you're working in an essential function and you have to get to work and that's your way of getting to work, then um, you know, continue to use that. And I, for, our, for our Uber and Lyft drivers out there, um, I'm, I'm hoping that they're taking extra precautions to clean their vehicles after every, uh, every passenger as well. Okay, Chief, thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking time today. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Thank you, guys. All right. Next up on our list is we have uh, from the Inland Empire Utilities Agency, Director Steve Eli. Steve, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Great. Um, I can't. I don't actually see the video going. Well, I don't know if you wanted a video or not, but I, I was going to show everybody that I'm in work-at-home mode. I've got <laughs> my hat and my IUA T-shirt on, and we're all good. So. Um, for those that don't know, IEUA is the wholesale water provider as well as the, the main sewage service provider for the Chino Valley. So if you think about it, you take a shower, it goes down the drain. It then goes to a, to a main in your street, which goes to a bigger main within your city. And then by gravity, the sewage water flows to one of our plants in, in a big pipe. Um, so we have three plants in Chino. and um, those are servicing the southern end of our service area, which goes from Chino Hills all the way to Fontana. So um, one of the things the chief just talked about triggers something in my mind. We have an amazing um, nature park, 23 acres, uh, next to our facility on Kimball and El Prado. That is not closed. However, again, just like the chief said, if you do go out there and use it, people go out there and use it a lot for photography and other things, please keep the social distancing. Um, we have 300 employees agency-wide. Um, we have uh, done a number of things to um, help our employees be safe while still maintaining this essential service. Imagine if you couldn't flush your toilet or, or use your sink, right? And with more people at home, um, it's very important that we continue to maintain the level of service that, that we've always provided, which pretty much, as you know, you turn, you open, in your sink, you turn on your shower, you don't even think about where it goes, it just goes. You turn on your tap, 
you get your water. So um, we have, by way of example, we have um, taken all of our employees and um, set them up, those that are in the offices uh, on a skeleton crew, just to maintain the office and everybody else is telecommuting. Um, we are doing a lot of Zoom conferences like this or Skype or something else. Um, we have um, our operators, the people who actually maintain the wastewater treatment plants, which by the way, we take the wastewater and then turn it into recycled water. Um, and then we also take the solids that are remaining and we compost them up in a facility up in Rancho Cucamonga um, where we turn that into compost. So we, there's a lot going on. Um, we are maintaining the services and it's very important that people remember to not put anything down the toilet but the three Ps, paper, as in toilet paper and nothing else, no other paper, no wipes, no anything else. Um, and number one and number two, pee and poo, if you will. <laughs> so that's very important. So people, you know, especially as we have more people at home. So we're, you know, the, the largest day we have historically um, is Super Bowl Sunday. And right around after the halftime show is probably the, the biggest surge. But with more people working at home and being at home, it's very important that we not start throwing things down. The, the grease that people sometimes put down, the eggshells, all, all those kinds of things should not go in your system, they should go in your trash. And that's, you know, for all of our benefit, it, it, it increases everybody's costs if we have to continually uh, remove those materials. So I don't know, uh, Zeb, if you had any other additional questions. I just, you know, we we are trying to be responsible. We have a lot of employees who live in our service area, and um, we are making sure that all non-essential personnel are offsite. And um, you know, there there is no, and just actually, this is really probably for the two cities, but but since we're the wholesale provider, I will say that your tap, there is no reason, absolutely no reason to get bottled water and have a rush on bottled water. Your tap water is better than that and subject to many more regulatory uh, hurdles to make sure that it is safe. There is no danger from the virus in the water at all. Okay, that's great. Is there any specific challenges that uh, the coronavirus has presented to you and your agency? Um, I, I think we're fairly typical of any, any business where people work in close quarters and see each other and have meetings. Um, we've also, um, the governor has issued uh, certain orders. We are subject to the Brown Act, which means that you know, three of our board members can't meet without it being a public meeting, et cetera. The governor has issued a bunch of orders which allow us to, to um, report telephonically <laughs> or over veto like this. So um, we the challenge is sometimes is remaining as a public agency open to people, but at the same time, protecting our employees and the public in general. Um, so we have an amazing um, ISS staff that's helped us tremendously. Um, we, we follow very closely all of the directives um, and sometimes the confusing directives coming out of the, the governor's office. So. There is a COVID-19 website that the state has put out that they continually update. Um, and that's my biggest suggestion would be that people keep that, keep that tab open because it does change. Um, uh, you know, and, and some of the things that I've noticed just in general, so we are a public agency, but we are, we are trying to maintain this, both the, the, the letter and the spirit of these directives. And so, for example, we have a number of uh, capital projects that will infuse money into the economy. We're not slowing those down, uh, um, whether it's the planning or the, whether it's the planning or the, um, Manfred, you need to mute your, your thing. Whether it's the planning or the um, actual construction when it starts to happen. So um, I think that, you know, so that, that's, that's been a, a challenge in the sense of some people are concerned about um, not moving forward with things and, and, you know, is the whole economy going to shut down? Mm. Um, so. Okay. 
All right. Well, well, thank you very much, Steve. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, update us on how this is uh, how this is all affecting the in the Empire Utility Agency and, and how we're getting our water and all that. So thank you. Um, well. Next on our next on our list, we have from the Inland Empire Utilities or sorry, mm -hmm. we have from the Inland Empire Economic Partnership Chief Economist Dr. Manfred. And is it? I'm sorry. Is it Kiel or Kyle? It's Kyle. Kyle. Dr. My, my, Kyle. My, my daughter will say, uh, if you say Kiel, she will say, I will kill you. <laughs> good to know, good to know. Okay, I promise I'll say Kyle from here on out. Uh, Dr. Kyle, you're up. Yes, so um, we have posted at the Inland Empire Economic Partnership, and it's easy to remember, ieep.com. We have posted a brief uh, about the current uh, economic situation including uh, the latest um, data that we have available. So let me uh, make sort of a, a quick summary statement of what we see. Um, the summary statement is that uh, we assume that there will be a serious but short-lived recession, meaning it will be over by uh, the uh, second quarter, um, the third quarter in, in uh, later this year. So we should see signs of recovery in October. Um, and we actually sort of gave a litmus test whether or not this has, will happen. And it will happen if we see that the um, Coachella Festival will take place, not because the Coachella Festival creates a lot of uh, revenue, it does. It, it has an impact of the order of 400 million dollars on the um, Coachella uh, Valley uh, area, but simply it will be indicative of other things happening, such as perhaps other sporting events uh, starting and so forth. So in order for this to happen, um, there, 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 we will have to see progress on the virus front to the extent that there will be no more increases in new coronavirus cases um, by the uh, uh, second week of May, and we will need to figure out some way to contain this by the first week of June. If that happens, and there will be a package in Congress of a significant amount, $3 trillion, which would be 15% of GDP, then uh, um, good things will happen uh, in the later parts of the year. And, and with that, we hope that there will be a vaccine within 12 months rather than 18 months. And also that there will be medicine uh, available in the fall and to um, deal with some of the more extreme cases of the virus. So that's for the national economy. Now, if you go in the news today, you would see that President Trump is seriously considering uh, lightening the restrictions for the nation in terms of uh, businesses running uh, and so forth. This is front page news in the New York Times and the LA Times. So I invite anyone to, to go there. Um, however, uh, this will not apply to California or the state of New York where the governor sets uh, restrictions. So our assumption continues to be that uh, Governor Newsom will continue with um, the restrictions that he has placed on the economy as, as we've seen currently. Um, the Indian Empire will be particularly hard hit because our economy sort of thrives on sectors that other parts of the U.S. economy does not thrive on, um, namely logistics. So that's uh, warehousing and transportation and to some extent wholesale uh, uh, trade. And the reason for, for that is that 40% uh, of all U.S. imports, of all U.S. imports, not just into California, come through two ports, the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. And um, container traffic uh, is basically down 20%. So what you have to understand about Southern California is once these containers come in, there's little that you can do with them other than putting them on trains and trucks. Um, in those two ports because there is no warehouse area uh, of, of a significant amount to deal with them. So everything gets shipped out here 
to the Inland Empire and then redistribute it. So um, that part of the logistics sector will be down significantly. To counter that a little, um, we have learned that Amazon is hiring 100,000 uh, people because of domestic shipments going up. And of course, much of that goes through um, Ontario Airport. Um, UPS has a huge facility there, um, and FedEx as well. But we don't believe that um, that part, that increase in logistics in terms of employment, can make up for the losses in employment uh, generated through um, the fewer imports. For example, uh, there have been 50 fewer ships from China at this point. Uh, they're, they're simply not arriving because China has, has stopped uh, production and is only now coming back online. So the bottom line is, is as a takeaway, the, the short run situation will be bleak. Um, we will see huge amounts of uh, unemployment. Uh, in the last um, crisis, we peaked at 15%. Um, I'm, I will be surprised, that's, that's for the Inland Empire. I will be surprised if in the Inland Empire we will not see numbers as high as 20%. But hopefully all of this will be mitigated by a strong government uh, package, in, including checks to individuals uh, of more than $1,000 per person, and uh, so that we can survive in the short run. And if we survive this, um, then there is uh, quite a bit of hope that in the late um, fall we will see a recovery. That's my summary. I'm sorry that uh, uh, I cannot give you better news, but but that's uh, as bleak as uh, as it gets. Um, may maybe we should go back to 911 calls on toilet paper, which, by the way, uh, to lighten this up a little, uh, the Portland PD uh, listed their answers that they gave to, to customers, which were quite... Um, funny in terms of alternatives that you can use. I, I urge you to uh, Google this if you want to smile on the day. <laughs> okay, uh, sounds good. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a couple of questions, or at least, at least one question for you. Um, so so we're seeing like, a, I got a, con a phone call uh, yesterday from Walmart distribution centers from their corporate offices saying that they're hiring, you know, 7,000 people here and uh, that they wanted to get the word out. And so we sent out an announcement through our list. I know we've even had some of our members that have got hired by uh, the local Costco. Uh, so there's a lot of these supermarket and distribution centers are hiring right now. Um, so, so is there, I guess, is there anything that we can do to help uh, you know, those, those people that are either being laid off or furloughed, getting them into those opportunities that are opening up in the different sectors? I mean, is that, is that, a, is that a thing? I mean, uh, do you have any insight on that? The, uh, the, the sector that will obviously thrive the most on this is uh, healthcare. Um, that will be in the sector that has been expanding since uh, 2008 to counter sort of the losses that we've seen in construction and manufacturing. Other than that, um, as I said, the logistics sector, despite of what you just said, overall will suffer. Now, hopefully we can shift some of the people who were working on containers and warehouses from imports to places such as Amazon uh, and the like. I think the best thing to do is to provide information to people. In other words, um, Think, think of, of, of employment and, and workers as a relationship between two people. And uh, if, if you don't know who the singles are that you want to attach yourself to, then you won't find them. So one way uh, you deal with this in employment is you have employment centers or the internet. And it's the same thing here. We need to provide people with information on um, how they will be able to access those, those type of jobs. Regarding retail, uh, you, you're absolutely right. Obviously, stores uh, are hiring people, but that, again, in that sector is offset by the rest of retail not doing very well. For example, the, the Macy's, the Bloomingdale's, the, the big department stores, or I, I, I don't have to tell you the obviously, if you, if you went up um, to the factory outlets, uh, they, they will be uh, dead at this point. Um, you know, so yes, and there are even within sectors um, certain firms that will thrive: the the, the Ralphs, the Vaughns, 
the the you know the usual. Um, uh, it's it's a it's it's a point of how to find them. And again, the more information you can provide, um, the better. If if you can act as as a clearing place for for that type of information, that will be wonderful, and and people would flock to the website to see uh, that sort of information placed. Okay, good. And we are trying to update that on our Chino Valley page. So we have a COVID-19 update page on the Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce website. And so anytime we hear of any kind of uh, hiring events or anything like that, we're trying to compile that for you there as well. So, so Dr. Kyle, I want to thank you for coming in and sharing your insights with us. I really appreciate you taking the time to come in and jump on this call with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and I also want to give it just an update to everybody who's watching today. Uh, I did just figure out how to post this on Facebook Live. So we're going here uh, on the webinar platform, but we're also utilizing Facebook Live to share this with uh, the people that follow the Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce Facebook page. So uh, if you are watching this, feel free to share that with your family and friends or groups that you feel like should be participating in this today. I also encourage you to ask, answer your questions in the chat box. Uh, we have uh, different agencies that are also here, so they may not be participating as panelists today, but they are still offering their insights and resources in the chat box. So please feel free to uh, check those out in our chat. I know we have the city of Chino that has chimed in. We've had the Chino Valley Fire that has chimed in. And so there's lots of different uh, places that you can have on that. Also, if, if you are one of those agencies and you want to uh, say a few words at the end, uh, if we have time, I'll include you as well. Uh, so with that, I want to go on to our, our next panelist for today. Our next panelist is the Public Affairs Manager for SoCal Gas, Leah Peterson. So let me uh, see if I can get her on here. Leah, I got you set up. I think you might need, there you go. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Zeb, thank you so much for setting this up. I know not only for myself, but um, all of my colleagues at SoCal Gas appreciate the opportunity for us to be able to reach out to the public and to our colleagues at the city, the fire, uh, and the police uh, to educate everyone about what's going on so we can continue to communicate and work together even if they, we are all remote. Um, I don't have my video on and I'm not going to because I don't have my makeup on so live with it. Um, I always have to look good even if I am sitting at home alone by myself. <laughs> Um, a couple of uh, things that I'd like to share with everyone, particularly because of the comments that we're getting. I'm on a number of conference calls with other chambers of commerces, as well as my own company and other organizations that are out there. Um, I wanted to share with everyone that um, Southern California Gas Company has plenty of natural gas supplies. We have no problem with service and being able to continue to heat your homes, uh, for you to be able to use hot water, and for those companies that are still operating and manufacturing, we have plenty of uh, natural gas to be able, for them to be able to continue their efforts of keeping the economy rolling. Um, we have about 22 million customers, residents, and businesses and throughout Southern California with over 100,000 miles of pipe in the ground. So we have our field crews out working every day. We're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We're listed as one of the essential services. And I know in some cities, uh, and in some counties, they have overlooked that. So it is important that if anyone is, um, a jurisdiction is considering the, uh, clamp down on who can be out and about uh, to please include the utilities such as our colleagues at the water department, electricity, and obviously of course SoCal Gas. Um, we have over 8,000 trained employees and we are used to doing emergency response. Um, I'm an emergency responder myself so I have the personal equipment, the gloves, the mask, um, as well as whatever else is required for the incident that I'm responding to. So our employees are trained in that regards as well, so that 
why we are continuing to respond quickly, supporting police and fire on emergency calls. Um, during this emergency, we will not be turning off customers, natural gas service, if they cannot pay their bill. If they have a problem with making payments because of job loss or anything else, they can call our 800 number. So if you have a pencil, it's 800-427-2200. Again, it's 800-427-2200. Or they can go to SoCalGas.com and they can make payment arrangements there or they can find out about other programs that we have to be able to assist you. If you're a senior, we can lower and you're on limited income, we can lower your rates by 20%. And there's other programs as well. We unfortunately, because of the limiting of face-to-face -face contact, we have closed all of our branch payment offices. So that is why it's important to be able to either mail in your payment, go online, use a credit card. Um, it is obviously pushing people to start using more online resources that are available to them. Our employees have remote access. We have always had this. So we are able to disperse our employees to stay at home as much as possible. And it's only our essential personnel that are out um, going to our operations bases and out in the field and working. Um, and as I said, we're going to continue to maintain our natural gas infrastructure. Uh, that is an essential service and the safety of the public our customers and our employees is our number one priority um, while we get through this emergency health um, situation. The other thing I would like to add is that just the uh, yesterday, my company has uh, reached deep and we are donating over a million dollars to local nonprofit organizations, uh, particularly those that are involved in the uh, post coronavirus uh, recovery efforts, uh, a lot of organizations that do fantastic things such as child care with the YMCA's, the other organizations that are out there that are helping place people in jobs, they will not be operating and they're going to need funding and these grant opportunities are available. So I will be sending you the link and the information of how nonprofit organizations can apply. So Zeb, if you would be so kind to post that, we would really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, please do. And all the information I get, and uh, just so you know, we've been updating our uh, COV ID 19 update page on our chamber website. We have included the fact that you're not going to be shutting off services uh, for those folks. So that press release that you put out there, I made sure to include that in our document as well. Uh, so I wanna thank you guys for what you're doing and, and uh, making sure that we're taking care of our citizens here. Cause I know that this is a, a unique time for all of us. Um, so thank you. Thank you for coming on and sharing those insights with us. Um, next on our next on our panelists list, and, and by the way, our participants, if you're in this and you're watching this webinar, don't be shy. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, feel free to comment. Feel free to connect with one another as well. Uh, but uh, we have our next panelist is from the partner, is in a partnership specialist at Los Angeles Regional Census Center, Renee Meta. Renee, I'm going to unmute you there. Renee, are you ready? Yes, I am. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, I, my name is Renee Meta, and I am from um, Partnership Specialist from the United States Census Bureau. And I really want to thank all of you for your partnership during this critical time. Um, thank you, Zeb, for making this platform for all of us to meet and speak and just share. It's a critical time for our nation. And just to let you know that you know, we know our number one priority is the safety and the health of our community. And that's our main priority. But moving forward, um, many of you have heard that many of census operations have been put on hold, such as enumeration and questionnaire assistance centers. Um, but the 2020 census.gov is live. Nearly all participants have been mailed a census questionnaire. So we are leveraging technology now and we're doing whatever we can that, you know, to let our residents know that you received the census invitation. Even if you didn't, you can go to 2020census.gov and participate. Um, and if someone doesn't want to do it over the internet, they have phone capabilities, they can even um, request, a, a request a questionnaire and we can mail it. But 
as leaders and all of us that are here today, I really appreciate Zeb for making this platform, is really just to let everyone know that their participation is needed more than ever before. We really need to ensure that our community gets the accurate count so we get the accurate funding and representation moving forward. Um, the United States Census Bureau uh, has extended the self-response phase from July 31st to August 14th and 15th. So we can still do that. Um, and as, as a partnership specialist, I'm leveraging technology as well, doing a lot of PSAs, speaking a lot of social media platforms, um, doing interviews, and whatever I can to make sure that, you know, still working around the clock, but really keeping the boat afloat to make sure that everyone does participate and help our community. If you go to the 2020census.gov website, you will, receive, you will uh, see that the Census Bureau is posting um, response rates every day at 3 p.m. And so far, Chino is at 21.3% and Chino Hills is at 26.5%. So there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. I know it's only been, been two weeks out, but we really want those numbers to be high um, and you know, make it sure that we get that accurate count. Um, so I'm here as a partnership specialist to collaborate any way you want. I'm uh, working from home, yes, but I can you know, distribute flyers or posters and if you, you know, any of your organizations, if you need, whatever we can do to work together and collaborate during this critical time to make sure that we get the accurate count. Uh, excellent, excellent. We have some, uh, we did have a, a couple of questions that came in. One of them says that they fill out their census online. Mm -hmm. uh, three days later, they got a notice that asked them to fill it out again. Uh, he wants to make sure that, hey, I want to know that they got my stuff. Why would they send me another notice? I mean, have you had any kind of feedback like that before? So I did receive an email this morning. Um, the Census Bureau, because of the low response rates that are coming out, um, uh, so they are sending out reminder mails. And that could have been something that was said. I know um, this was done three days ago, but maybe sent, they sent out those reminder letters a week ago or 10 days ago based on, you know, the COVID-19 and we're all leveraging different ways to do outreach and keep those things going. So I think those reminder letters must have been something that was sent before, um, just so that we keep reminding everyone as much as we can. Good, and then is there any way that, uh, or, so, so what's the status on census workers coming to your door, that kind of stuff, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure, so enumerators and the census workers they have been um, delayed. So there are training and there are, that operations has been put on hold. And so there's not gonna be, um, so far we have the date of end of March, but right now that is changing on a daily basis based on COVID-19 and whenever we consider it safe for enumerators to go being out there um, to do that. So there are gonna be no enumerators as of right now. Um, I know that there are a lot of virus, uh, various scams that are going on. Um, a lot of, um, we just got a press release yesterday and I can share that with you as well um, from the 2020 census regarding uh, people saying that if you fill out the census, it's, regard, you know, it's related to the stimulus bill. That's not true. Your information is secure and protected under Title 13. If you go to the 2020 census website, and I'll post it on here as well, the your questionnaire is, is not related to the stimulus bill. There is a lot of scams and I, it's really unfortunate that these come about in these you know, critical times, but just to let you know your information is secure. Good, and uh, what kind of ID will they have? So uh, I have the census ID on me as well, um, but it's really, and I'll post that as well uh, to show you as well, but they, they would have an ID, but to really, um, I ask our citizens and our residents not to look towards the ID. This is how the ID does look like, just for um, your general uh, knowledge. But um, there is an 800 number. And I would really request um, anyone who has suspicion is to call that 1-800 number um, if they have a numerator knocking on the door to verify. Um, and that's probably you'll get the most up-to-date information based on that. So I will post that up, the, the scams information, as well as my phone number and email address and, um, you know, the 800 number where you can call the United States Census Bureau to really validate the person knocking at your door. 
Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that, Renee, uh, for sharing those insights with us. Um, so, so, so I, and I apologize for the noise here. I think I shared this in the last time. I'm doing this in, out of my garage because we're trying to you know, keep our social distancing. So my wife had to get something out of the garage. So she yeah. had to uh, But while I'm doing that is, is I want to say that we have our chat box there. Uh, for those of you, this is kind of like open forum now. We've had all of our panelists, some have stayed on. So I see Steve is still here, Leah is still here, Renee is still here. So if you have any questions for them, uh, those of you that represent those agencies, if you have an update you want to share, I think there's an option for you to raise a hand. I can include it that way. What I plan on doing right now is I am going to update everybody on uh, chamber activities that we've been tackling. Um, probably the biggest thing, and I want to encourage you all to be aware of, is, is on our website, we have a COVID-19 update page or COVID-19 update page. Uh, that's on our website and we're updating that daily with information that we're getting from the different legislators and agencies and like we mentioned the SoCal gas uh, when they put out a press release that says they're not going to be shutting off people's gas we include that information we include information from uh, the national agencies about uh, the SBA loans that are available to businesses when that bailout comes there's going to be a lot of resources and funds available for businesses to take care of as well so we're going to make sure we put that information there. Uh, so if you have any, and those of you that are on the call that are our Chino Valley leaders or that represent organizations, send that stuff to me and I'm making sure that I'm putting it on our website so that we can educate our businesses about that. Uh, one of the other things I want to point out is we are doing a survey. The Chino Valley Chamber of Commerce has put together a survey. The goal of the survey is to compile information about how this coronavirus is affecting your business so that we can then take that to our legislators who can advocate on behalf of the businesses in the Chino Valley. So the more information they have about your business, how it's operating, how it's doing, we're giving that to them so they can use that to try and help secure resources and funds for our community. So I hope if you own a business or know somebody who runs a business, be sure to check that out. Uh, we've also set up on our website a uh, chamber restaurant page. So we're showing all the restaurants in the Chino Valley who are offering takeout or delivery services. So if you know of any business, any restaurant who is offering takeout or offering delivery, check out that list. If they're not on there, shoot me an email and I'll make sure they get on there. Uh, we're really trying to do all we can to help support businesses right now. Uh, so that's kind of what we have there. Does anybody have any questions or anybody want to chime in with anything? Uh, do me a favor, feel free to hit that raise hand button. Uh, we also had anticipated on the call at 9.20, either uh, Congresswoman Norma Torres or one of her representatives. That one is kind of up in the air because I know that they're also very busy. So I want to make sure that we stay on at least until 9.20 to make sure that uh, they have the opportunity to get in if they are. So I'm going to run through the chat and just kind of highlight some things. Also, this is on our Facebook Live. So if you get a chance when you're done, you can share that post out to your audience. I think in the future, I'll be sure to do it. Oh, this is a question that I had uh, for those of you that are watching today is what would be the best time to host this type of workshop today? We, we posed the question to our leaders when they could come in. Uh, but we didn't get a uh, large amount of response. So I kind of wanted to ask you guys that are here today, when would be the best time for us to host a Chino Valley Leadership Forum on the coronavirus and how we can impact that? So, if, so the plan is to do it every Tuesday at 8.30, unless, you all, unless there's a better time that you think might be available for us. So let me go through our chat box and see if there's anything I miss. So we have Chino Valley Fire. Uh, they said, thank you for hosting. Should you have any questions regarding inspections? So if you have a, a need for an inspection, uh, the fire marshal at chofire.org will be able to help you out. Uh, Chris Kennedy is on with the city of Chino. Uh, so if you have questions about whether or not your business is considered an essential service. Uh, Chris Kennedy is somebody that you can reach out to. Uh, his email is ckennedy at cityofchino.org. Um, we had Stephanie Wade from Gil Cisneros' office. Um, 
if anyone is interested in helping a company that's shipping masks to hospitals, they have a website available for you. It's astsportswear.com. Uh, I saw Ryan had a comment here. Let me see if I can find that one. Ryan, oh, so here's another thing that's coming out too. We got, re we were contacted by Congresswoman Norma Torres's office to ask about manufacturers in the city of Chino to see if they could manufacture needed medical supplies and ventilators. Uh, so they've reached out to those businesses in Chino. So if you know of a manufacturing business, you are a manufacturing business, um, try to connect them with me and I can make sure we build a connection between you and them. Ryan with the San Bernardino County Workforce is doing the same thing. So you can also have him contact Ryan uh, with San Bernardino County Workforce Development. His email address is in the chat box. And then we have this time where it says, I like this time, Chino Hills City Council meeting tonight is on Zoom. Uh, so you can check out, so the Chino Hills City Council meeting is tonight. Uh, so you definitely want to be aware of that. It's there, I think they're doing using it Zoom. Uh, I talked with uh, Valerie who asked me some questions about how we're doing these. So I think it's gonna be very similar format to this. Uh, Jim shared the link there. So that will be the plan, I think once a week, we are going to have this Chino Valley Leaders webinar to help educate businesses on what organizations are doing uh, in response to the coronavirus and, and uh, how we can be most prepared for it from uh, all standpoints. So we're trying to get people from the economic areas, we're trying to get medical folks, we're trying to get legislators in here to help educate our businesses about how they can be best prepared and uh, give them all the information that you need to know. So do me a favor, Help me promote this uh, so that next week when we have it Tuesday at 8.30 uh, that, that we have a, that we can get businesses there that really need to get the information that we're presenting here in these workshops. So I want to thank you to our panelists. I want to thank you to Chino Police Chief Wes Simmons. I want to thank you, Steve Eli, for coming on from the IEUA. I want to thank you for our, uh, Chief Economist, Dr. Manfred Kyle from the IEEP. Leah Peterson from SoCal Gas, Renee Met Meta, 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 <laughs> Renee Meta from uh, the Los Angeles Regional Census Center. And uh, I wanna thank you guys for being our panelists. I wanna thank you guys for participating. And oh, we have Jennifer Shaw from Southern California Edison is donating a million dollars to nonprofits as well. So SoCal Gas is donating a million dollars to nonprofits. Southern California Edison is doing the same. So thank you guys for being good community partners and helping do that. Thank you everybody for participating. We're gonna end this now. Uh, let me know, uh, feel free to shoot me any emails during the week to let me know if you have any questions, things that come up as it pertains to coronavirus. I'll make sure we get those questions asked when we do these webinars and go from there. Thank you. Have a great day and feel free to share this on Facebook too. Thanks.